the life I live now by your faith I live unto your righteousness oh yes the life I live now by your faith I live unto your righteousness oh yes the life I live now by your faith I live unto your righteousness oh, yes the life I live now by your faith I live unto your righteousness oh, yes the life I live now by your faith I live unto your righteousness. Oh, yes, the life I live now by your faith. I live unto your righteousness. Oh, yes, the life I live now by your faith. I live unto your righteousness. Oh, yes, the life I live now by your faith. I live unto your righteousness. For I'm elected and chosen. Elected and chosen by you, Lord. Oh, I'm elected and I'm chosen. Oh, I'm elected. Chosen by you, Lord. Oh, I'm elected. Chosen. Oh, I'm elected. Chosen by you, God. Oh, I'm elected. And I'm chosen. Oh, I'm elected. And chosen by you, Lord. Oh, in this life I live now by your faith, I live unto your righteousness. Yes, this life I live. Now by your faith, I live unto your righteousness. Oh, yes, this life I live now by your faith, I live unto your righteousness. Yes, this life I live. Now by your faith, I live unto your righteousness. Yes, this life I live, now by your faith, I live unto your righteousness.
Your prayer. 
me one more time, only your presence, only your glory. Please. 
sing the Holy Ghost part again. I love this song because it's what, it's what really, we're really all <laughs> supposed to be about. Every moment of the day, Holy Ghost, I yield myself to you. Let your rivers flow out of me. <laughs> the recogni recognition that we cannot do it of ourselves, but we look to him yes. to do it through us. Amen. Oh, the author and the finisher, our perfecter our provider and protector Hallelujah. to let the rivers of the Holy Ghost flow out. Let the rivers of the Holy Ghost pour out of us to the needy around us to make the barren land bloom. You alone can make the barren land bloom. Let us be his water courses to this world around us to bring life. Where the river flows, there is 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 life. So let his rivers flow out of you. Lord, we let your rivers flow out of us. 
But we let your rivers flow out of us, God. Flow out of us. Flow out of us. Flow out of us. Oh, flow out of us. Oh, flow out of us. Flow out of us. Flow out of us. To bring life and healing wherever we go, Lord. So sing us with this. Sing this with us. And just such passion and desperation and such brokenness and such reality. Such truth in the inward parts. That's what he's looking for, truth in the inward parts. He just wants the real, not the fake. And by no means nothing that we can conjure up of our own ability. But by flowing in the rivers, flowing in the rivers. myself to you let your rivers flow out of me Holy Ghost I yield myself to you I let your rivers flow out of me for you time. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the abiding place this evening. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You make us valiant for you. 
Those victorious in you, Lord, that we run through every troop and leap over every wall. Greetings tonight. Welcome. We love each and every one of you. There's nothing so precious as his presence. Hallelujah. 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 You guys can keep playing. Hallelujah. From strength to strength, from glory to glory. He's called us now to dwell in the holies of holies with Him. The way that before was shut out. Where He had to say, draw nigh nigh. He now says, draw nigh. And what a privilege it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to administer the, the word here a little bit. If you turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. I just want to briefly water you with the word a bit. At least I think it'll be brief. I just want to remind you guys about the, the pinnacle of the meeting is the altar time. And I just don't want us to ever forget the the part that we play is the body together as people are being ministered in. It's so sacred. It's so wonderful. It's marvelous and awesome what, what takes place. So where I see the meeting going this night is a, a bit of watering from the word and then the altar time. If you have a need, if there's anyone in here that needs salvation, I don't know that right now that I don't I see any visitors. Maybe I'm overlooking you. Will you raise your hand if you're a visitor for the first time tonight? Okay, it looks like it's mostly people that have been here before. Hallelujah. Chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And we're to continue here, but I'm going to remind you that a lot, several passages in, in this first part of Hebrews are taken directly from the Psalms. We made reference to them as a song was going forth, prophesying and telling of the future events of the Messiah, our Savior. So let's pick it up at, at verse 4 here. Being made so much better than the angels, and as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And I just can't help myself, but I have to break in right here. Can you hear the Father saying that to you? I will be a father to you, and you will be my child. I will be a father to you. Oh, the goodness of the Father. Oh, His grace and love of the Father. Hallelujah. I get to experience a little bit of that being an earthly father and having my dear little girls over here running around and the love the intense burning love that I have 
for them, to see them excel, to see them ordered or right in their conduct, and we're working on some areas of that right now, that grow with the maturation process of it. Hallelujah. Growing, you know, we start out as newborn babes desiring the silk milk of the word, and we never lose that desire and that hunger. It only intensifies. But there's a growth and maturity uh, that the Lord has for us. And praise God for children. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Of course, speaking of Christ Jesus, who was the model son. He was the model man. The Savior, the Redeemer of the world. The one who in whom all the nations will put their trust. Hallelujah. And I want to continue on here. But I'm reminded in the uh, talking about children. Sometimes we as parents, we hear quite a bit of whining that we work with. And let us just examine ourselves about are we whining to our Father? <laughs> I hope this is helpful for someone tonight, but are we whining about the circumstances that we have when really, if we would see through Father's eyes all He's blessed us with, that the little toy or something that we want that we can't have and we're throwing a fit over is nothing compared to the goodness and the grace and all that He has in store for us in His divine plan for our destiny. Hallelujah. So anyway, continuing on here. No whining, right girls? No whining? No whining. Not going to be whiners or complainers. We know how the Lord feels about that. And in fact, as we go along here, we're, we're going to get a little reference to that. About what happened in the wilderness. Okay, so continuing on, praise the Lord. I'm just so blessed to be with you guys. I'm just so blessed. I know you guys have heard me say this before, but I, I always value, I always value, and I pray you do too, the sacredness of His presence, the manifestation of His glory, the times we live in, the relative peace and luxury. Not only that, but the place of the abiding place. Right now, this collective body where it's us saying, Holy Spirit, we give you full control. That we don't want things manipulated by man at all in any area. And I've gotten to see a bit more of that in the past couple years. About things that are more just ordered and, and the attitude is, well, the Holy Spirit isn't limited. Of course, He's not limited, but He is limited when we place limits upon Him. Oh, Holy Spirit, may we not limit you in any area of our lives, Lord, or in your church, but have just that perfect, childlike heart and disposition and demeanor for you that takes you at your word, every word you, you say, Lord, that your word is hidden in our hearts, in the depths of our soul. Lord, that you've written them in our minds and in our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to get back focused here on verse, verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And all the angels, he, sa he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. I want to be one of those ministers that's a flame of fire. Our God is a consuming fire. 
And nothing can stand in the way of that. Hallelujah. Nothing of man, nothing of the doctrines of man, and especially not anything of the hindrances of the principalities of the wickedness that's in this world. There's coming a day, Pastor Mark was talking about this quite a bit on Wednesday, about the appointed day of wrath and judgment of the Lord. Hallelujah, the just judge of all, who, who will recompense every man, give according to every man, according to his works. Lord, let our works now be tried by fire. God, that they be found under praise, honor, and glory. Lord, not stubble and hay and of that which perishes. Lord, may we be found on fire in the fire, bringing forth fruit, perfect fruit. The refining fire. The refiner's fire. Thank you, Lord. Verse 8. But under the sun he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. And I've got to say these words again. Because I just hear these songs as they're referenced. And uh, I believe it's Psalms... Oh, it's escaping me right now. But just the psalmist crying this out, this reality. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Are you anointed with the oil of gladness? Is there a witness of the joy of the Spirit, that witness of the Spirit in our lives? May I pray, I pray it be so and an increase of it. Hallelujah. And my life and all of our lives. Oh, what a witness that we be those who are anointed with the oil of joy, that oil of gladness above our fellows where our cup is running over Lord, that we'd be so full of you that there's room for nothing else. Lord, fill us up so full of you that there's room for nothing else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but you remain, and they shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but you are the same, and thy years shall fail not. Speaking of the unchanging nature of the Lord, that it, as easily as he wants to, it could be as us folding a garment. You know, and it's, uh, just, just by him, whatever he wants, it would conform to that in an, in an instant. And praise the Lord for his eternal plan of salvation and redemption. To bring many sons unto glory. Hallelujah. I think that's coming up pretty soon here. Verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to, he forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Chapter 2. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time they should slip. You know, there's many times, and I'm sure you can attest to this, as I can, that if we don't have things set before us, or reminders, they slip our mind, as in, we don't remember them, we forget about them. And maybe something we see prompts a memory of, oh yeah, I was going to do that. Right? Well, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed, the things that need the most earnest paying attention to, the constant reminders of, that we not forget about them, those things that we have heard, the word. Lest at any time we should slip, lest at any time we should go out of the way, that we would lose our compass 
our guiding, for we are led by the Spirit. And if we give earnest heed, we will be led by the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. Verse 2, for if God, if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing with them witness, both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak, but one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you visited him? Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor, and then set him over the works of your hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he... Sorry, and he put all subjection under his feet. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not only, not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And what an assurance that Jesus has already defeated death, hell, and the grave for us. That by trust and faith in his name and by his blood, we have escaped the corruption that is in this world, the sting of death. We have escaped that sting, that potent sting of death. Hallelujah. The promise for us that are found in him, that he is our victor, and we are victorious in him because he has already tasted of death. He already ascended down into hell, defeating every power of death, hell, and the grave. And he holds the key to death and hell forever, through the ages and through eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 10, for it became him for whom all things and by whom all things whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory. He's brought many sons unto glory. Hallelujah. That he would bring many sons unto glory by this redempted work, by the things he suffered. Those things are set up here in chapter 1 that are describing him, his coming in the flesh. Him becoming as a seed of Abraham for our sakes, the same with things which he suffered, the things prophesied, referenced in the Psalms about the Messiah. Psalms 22 is one that comes to mind, and we may look there in a little bit. Oh, Lord, you brought many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings, the suffering that he went through for us, that he chose that the Father chose to allow His Son to suffer a brutal, hideous death of the cross for us, that He might receive a prize, you and me, many sons under glory, were His prize, a gift, a gift to the Father, His only Son, He spared not, how much more, so shall He freely give us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And if that doesn't make you happy, I don't know what else will. The reality of heaven, the reality of the gift of God for us, eternally secure so long as we abide and remain in Him. The branch and the vine are exceeding supply, living only for His presence and only for His glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for prophecy. Thank you, Jesus, for diverse type, di types of tongues and interpretation. Lord, that as a corporate body, we learn how to flow so perfectly with you. All the members join together, connected, connected perfectly, that nothing out of joint and everything in its proper, proper place and the divine order that you have purposed. We thank you for it, Lord. And we thank you for the growth and the maturity in every life in this place. Lord, first in us. First in us, that we can 
You can use us, God, to manifest your glory to those around us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 11. And I don't know how far I'll get through this. These are so packed with the, the riches. <laughs> oh, the depths of the riches of the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. For both he that sanctify us and them that are sanctified all of one. Oh, the oneness in the Lord. That oneness. Again, as I just said, the, the branch and abiding. Uh, the branch, uh, the vine abiding in the branch. There it is. The vine abiding in the branch. Hallelujah. You see that perfect system. The perfect system of the branch and the vine that brings forth fruit. They're not separate, but they're one. one the oneness. Hallelujah. And then he says, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Isn't that awesome that Jesus is not ashamed to call us his family? That he is our brother. We're in him, this oneness in him, but this, this fellowship of the family. How many of you like family? I love family. I love family. I love those times that we get together, especially when it's, you know, everybody now that, well, I guess we're back in San Diego now, but, but when we're, when our family's here, Thanksgiving, we get a taste of Pastor Geneva's cooking and just, just being part of the family, you know, just celebrating. It's time to celebration and fellowship. How much even more so when we're with him in that marriage supper of the Lamb, the celebration, the ultimate party. The world knows nothing about the party. And don't let them influence on you about what a party is. Praise God. God knows how to throw a party. He knows how. And let him teach you. Let him teach you. Let him teach us how to celebrate with one another in perfect love and unity. That there not be dissensions Anytime we come together, that we cast down every vain imagination, everything that would try and set itself up, that would try to create any kind of division or separation, that we be wise towards the craft of the enemy that would try to divide and separate, for that is his way that he can get in. For what does the scripture say? It says, where strife and division are, there's every evil work, and we don't want the least bit of any kind of work, any kind of compromise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Judah. Of the tribe called Praise. He's made us all <laughs> to bring forth praise. Hallelujah. That he wasn't ashamed to call us brethren. Verse 12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto you. And this is taken from Psalm 22. And I think we're going to go there at the end of this chapter. Before I think we're going to go to chapter 4 of Hebrews. But break up. Before chapter 3, Psalm 22. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 13. And again, I will, put, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death we're all their lifetime subject to the bondage. We were subject to the slavery of sin, but we've been liberate, liberated unto righteousness. Hallelujah. And again, as we said earlier, that he, Jesus Christ, has already defeated death, hell, and the grave. 16, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. That he took on these robes of flesh. 
that you and I live in, proving to us that we could walk perfectly before our God and these bodies that we live in now, these natural corruptible bodies that have the hope of the resurrection in Christ Jesus. The first fruits of the resurrection. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. We don't have to suffer an agonizing death, a painful, but the death of the righteous, those in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And those kind of type of things become more real when sickness tries to take hold of your body and it's like, ow. But praise the Lord, we have the victory that by His stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. That He gives us the opportunity to live in divine health. That He quickens us in our spirit as Romans 8, say, Romans 8 tells us. Hallelujah. Makes us alive, quickens our mortal bodies. I'm looking forward to when my mortal body puts on that heavenly, incorruptible, can we call it spirit man body? Right? Because our spirit is what is life. As James tells us, without the spirit, the body is dead, lifeless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For this life in him. Let his life, his presence, his fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And let us not let anything get in the way of that. Not our schedules, not our busyness, not our needs in this earth and temporarily, temporary things that perish. But the life giving power of God that makes alive our spirit, that makes alive our inner man. Hallelujah. Sowing to the spirit. Sowing to the spirit that we might reap everlasting. We reap the spiritual. Verse 17. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful. And oh, how merciful and faithful he is. High priest and thanks pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Oh, this abiding love of Christ, that he upholds us. And the power of the Spirit leads us. Let's turn over to Psalm 22. I love the Psalms. I love all the Bible. But I love the, I love the Psalms. The, uh, the song book. But it's more than just songs. It, it's the prophecy. Many sung out, spoken out. thy name to my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise you. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto When you cry, he hears your cry. He hears your call, your pleading, your petitioning. 
that his ears are open unto the righteous. Hallelujah. 25, my praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. Ah, the supreme ruler. You, almighty God, the supreme ruler of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Lord, that you said that heaven and earth could pass away before one little comma or dot, jot. Or tittle, pass away. Lord, none of none of it, none of your words gonna fail, not ever at any time. Hallelujah. And may the reality of that become so real in us, Lord. Twenty nine. All they that be fed upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. Again, the appointment of death that we have. We don't know when. We don't know where. But we know it will happen. But praise God, we don't have to suffer or taste the sting of death. We can in that moment be changed and step over in the realms of the kingdom. Hallelujah. But as we... We're going to reap what we show, what we sow as we live now. As we live now, the importance of being found in Christ Jesus now. Hallelujah. And that's getting ready to take us back to where we're going to go in Hebrews 3. A seed shall serve him. Praise God, that's us. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation, and we are in that number, the generation. Hallelujah. And praise God, I believe there's going to be many more in a generation, that it won't just be limited to the generation now, but more to come. Oh, for the harvest is great and plenteous, and the Lord of the harvest desires to glean as many as he can. Just as we, when we plant a vineyard, when we plant a garden with whatever it is, carrots, radishes, maybe it's fruit stuff, we desire to get the most out of our work, our handiwork, so that we might be blessed by the fruit that comes forth. So too the Father wants to gather as many as he can. Fruit, 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 fruit. Lord, I thank you for more fruit. More fruit. Fruit. If you're watching tonight, by way of the web or YouTube. Oh, the greatness God has for you. Surrender all to Him, and I tell you, it will be the best thing you ever do. For if you don't, the consequences of the end are already set. What might be pleasure now for a season is going to end in decay and corruption. For the wages of sin is death, as it says in Romans chapter 6. But the gift of God is eternal life. Since I don't see in this room anyone right now who needs salvation, I believe there is someone watching. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Believe on Him. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And you shall be saved. 
And he will work such a great work in you. And the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You'll be changed into a new man. To live the life of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Ha. Ah. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Lord, we want to see more people that don't know you in this place, come in this place, the abiding place, or even out there and be set free and then be plugged in to this church. Hallelujah. 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 Fruit, fruit, fruit. If you remember nothing else tonight, maybe just remember those. That one word repeated three times. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Bring him forth the fruit. Letting the fruit of the Spirit flow through you. Being fruitful in every good work. Fruit, fruit, fruit. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Isn't it so good to serve the Lord? May you be anointed with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Fruit, fruit, fruit. Ha <laughs> ha. I love his presence. I love his ability. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. Let's jump back over to Hebrews chapter 3. I love the watering of the word. The watering of the word. The direction that the Holy Spirit gives by the word going forth. Chapter 3. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. The heavenly calling. Not an earthly one. A heavenly one. Consider the apostle and high priest of our, of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ has a son over his own house. Whose house are we if we hold fast to the confidence and the rejoicing of the, ho of the hope firm unto the end? Again, this fellowship we have in him, this oneness, of abiding in him. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, said, saith, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and the day of temptation and the wilderness. Right? This is what I was talking about earlier, about the whining and complaining that was going on in the wilderness. That because of it, their carcasses had to fall in the wilderness. Continuing, Verse 9, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Again, that banishment, right? Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Big bummer. 
Verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And I'm going to finish here in chapter 4 so that we're not just left there, but exhorted in the rest of this about the rest. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith. You guys can turn up a little bit more. I can't hear you. Maybe it's just standing right here. Verse 3. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. For I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spoke in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest from the seventh day from all his works. And in the place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter their end, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying, And David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Again, not letting it slip. Right? We do our part and he does his part. He's the faithful God. Lest any man should fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And I pray tonight that the Lord has been able to slice you up with His Word going forth, that you might be able to bring forth fruit, fruit, fruit. Verse 13, Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in His sight, but all things are naked, Open unto the eyes of him with, with whom we have to do. His sovereignness, he sees the heart. He looks for truth. And he doesn't want anything less. Hallelujah. And I pray tonight that our hearts just be so open, so sensitive, not calloused in any way, but soft, pliable clay. Verse 14, going to the end here. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Please stand with me. Hallelujah. The reality, the reality of how near and how dear we are to his heart. Every part he sees. Oh, that every part may be given over completely. 
for he wills to do of his good pleasure in us. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we present ourselves as living sacrifices for you. Holy and acceptable. Lord, that we come. Lord, that we come into the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and we find help in the time of need. Lord, that we come boldly into the throne room. For this you have purposed by giving your best for us. First, your only son to die, that blood might be shed for the remissions of sins. But then your son, Christ Jesus, ascended into heaven at the right hand of the Father and poured out the best he could, the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. That you pour out freely on all those who would accept and believe. Lord, we accept with all our heart and we believe with all our heart the promise that you've given. Lord, we will labor. We will contend. We will not let this slip. God, but may it be at the forefront of our life every day. Lord, that we would be reminded in those things that we have consecrated to you. Lord, the morning, the noon, and the evening. Lord, to seek your face, just as you said, seek my face, and we say, your face, O oh Lord, will we seek. Your face, O oh Lord, will we seek. Living for the kingdom, living for the kingdom, living for the kingdom. Lord, we will seek first your kingdom and righteousness. Lord Jesus, as you told us, as recorded in Matthew 6, Lord, that we will seek your kingdom and righteousness. A seeking. Lord, that we be not passive but active. In cooperation and participation with you, Lord, and we thank you for it. <laughs> 